Welcome back around that way. Um, We're just walking around like our own so we can just have to change so we can go where we really like them. What? Yeah, look. Which means it's going to be used as a weapon against somebody. Easy, my weapon. Yeah, but I really going to look at your bike now. I'm down. Okay. And you look. And there's a lot of, lot of people here. A minute ago, the gates to the door were open, and now they're shut. Sure. Because they're running scared here. Yeah. You make it the router? Yeah, uh -huh. 
Free Mason Lodge. Hey John, hope you're well. I wonder who wrapped on you. <laughs> Hell of a far off. I'm not going I look at him, even with their babies, man, they're coming. Look at their babies, they're so young, man. Is that you? Yeah. I tell you. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, they don't know. You can just follow this cloud. They're behind us. <laughs>
This is about uh, the hate speech laws that are coming in. That's what this is about. Kind of yeah, we can't talk about a government. It's getting like China. China. That's when I'm trying to stop talking now. Do you know that? Yeah. Do you, don't you? Yeah. 
I don't know where we're going now, but they're gonna dock in the sound of me. I don't really like this as well, and it's on the ship, and I'm not taking all the settings and all and trying to fix it. Say hi. No, say hi in a minute to okay? Uh, it goes down the pack, Kyle. Look at the piece of gear back up now. I don't know where we're going. Kyle, get in. Stay in the past, APM. Is there a 
Yeah. I was gonna build his fucking wagon. <laughs> you know, crooks and everything. Yeah, get to here. Here you go. Hello, the now No, the bus is coming. Ah, oh, the shit. <laughs> Oh, 
Eu acho que Tô rica! Eu vou começar. Me got away for the for the rest. Hello. Hello, oh, young one. Um, Susan, right? Yeah. This is Linda. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
Now I'm coming to the GPO where there's a lot of people here. Well, these cameras that they're, they're, they're putting in. Oh, See them over there. The look at them. Zoom in so close. Them cameras are for our facial recognition. Come on over here. Thank you. 
Når du prøver at snakke. Oh God, Harry! You can't see. He's done it. Yeah, you're like, did you feel with museum? I don't know if you can see what the Black Lives Matter movement is about. Well, you're going to try and get closer, right? Well, you're going to try and get closer, right? And that is the one where mind the liberty, including the rights of free speech, that this state guarantees us a right because of our citizenship. Free speech must be regarded as the primary liberty because without free speech, no other freedom can be defended or vindicated. This has been recognized in every historical period, and in the first democracy of ancient Athens, free speech was regarded as so essential that the Athenian lawmaker Solon made it a crime for any free citizen to shirk from engaging in political controversy. In modern Ireland, it is increasingly becoming a very dangerous thing, and if the government gets it away, it will be a crime for anyone to engage in political controversy. Given our long history of oppression, this is something we as a free people cannot accept, and it is something which we will not accept. In many respects, our culture has descended into an obsession with language and perfectly innocent people who use the wrong expression in public and have their careers ended and their lives destroyed. We have seen the careers of some of our finest journalists and thinkers ended in this fashion. It is time for us to say this has got to stop. Our political parties have become more obsessed with how people express their opinions than they are with the welfare and the difficulties and the problems of ordinary working people. Why, in the midst of a housing crisis and a cost of living crisis, is this government obsessed with putting people in prison for using the wrong pronouns, as has effectively happened with this or Enoch Park. We cannot allow people like Enoch Park to languish in prison, because that's what radio television sharing will do. They will forget about it and hope that we will forget about it. We will not forget about people who stand up for liberty and freedom. If our language can be destroyed and controlled, then the government can exert ultimate control over its people. That obsession with total control was well illustrated during the infamous lockdowns, which did far more harm than the virus. And unless we act now, the level of oppression we saw during the lockdowns will become the standard operating manual for this state. The proposed bill currently before the door introduces for the first time into our society the twin, twin concepts of hate crime and hate speech. Does anybody think, as I do, that when you start using those terms in the context of legislation, that it brings us directly into the horrible world described by George Orwell in his novel 1984? Orwell warned us, well, that when an idea can no longer be spoken or expressed, it very quickly becomes an idea which can no longer even be thought. 
So we are not here just to defend free speech. We are here to defend free thought and defend our rights and dignity as human beings. I am here to say that we will never let them take that dignity from us without a fight of the most determined and bitter kind. The fun fell before the doll has at least two elements that should indeed fill all of us with dread. It defines hate crime as any crime which is perceived by the receiving party as having been motivated by hate. Just think about that for a moment. Such a perception is purely subjective and can have no place in any just law. What burden of proof will be required other than someone's feelings? This is clearly a blackmailer's charter and a liar's license. It, it has the potential to bring the entire legal process into disrepute and will inevitably cause dissension between the disparate elements of society rather than providing harmony between them. In addition, the proposed legislation introduces a two-tier system of law with a very restricted group of designated victim classes being empowered to use the legislation to attack and suppress the free speech rights of the majority population. This can only have the effect of increasing racial and social tensions. Can we not see that the kinds of social division and violence that we have seen played out in America's streets over the past years are a salutary warning to us of what may arrive here if our politicians, if our politicians continue to stoke the fires of racial division and gender hate? We can't let them do that. <laughs> This legislation concentrates on three main victim classes relating to race, gender, sexuality, and religion. The documents accompanying the legislation class homophobia as a negative attitude to homosexuality, not, mark you, a negative attitude to homosexuals. Anyone, therefore, who is concerned with their children being exposed to homosexual pornography or propaganda, as we see so often in our schools, and expresses a negative attitude to this, has the potential to face prosecution for an aggravated crime in a situation of conflict. The potential for undermining religious freedom is very obvious, and we must ask, is it not intentional? You can call these developments what you like, but please do not call them progressive because they are not. They will bring us backwards rather than forwards. <laughs> We must question whether the role of the Gardaí is going to be dramatically changed and whether its members will now be forced to become the political arm of an emergent police state. And if you want a taste of what may, that may be like, think of the lockdowns on steroids. We need on Garda Shia Khan to be just that, guardians of the peace and not enforcers of an intolerant moral code of political correctness. The lockdowns may serve as a salutary warning of what the so-called new normal, the Great Reset, where you will own nothing and you will be happy will actually be like. We must make it clear that we will not have a new normal. We will have no great reset. We will not accept the destruction of our society and the destruction of what has been in our normal methods of behavior. <laughs> Governments which seek to tyrannize people, such as within the old Soviet system, have always recognized the importance of separating people from their historical, cultural, and religious identities, and the need to destroy those elements of an historic nation. Can we not see the same forces at play in the Ireland of today, as indeed through all the states of the European Union, which has set its face so strongly against democracy and human liberty? We see Ursula von der Leyen going, stop, stay quiet. We see Ursula von der Leyen going to receive an award, the Peter Sutherland Award. Is it not correct? Five more minutes. We must let the government know that we are proud of our culture, we are proud of our history, we are proud of our roots, and we will never let government exercise tyranny over those values. In many ways, this is why the proposed hate speech legislation concentrates on racial matters. Couple this with the Agenda 2040, 
whereby government proposes the mass importation of up to one million persons into this country. And it becomes increasingly clear that Irish people will not be able to maintain any form of national identity into the future. Every day we see hundreds of unvetted foreign nationals being brought into this country with the purpose of replacing the Irish population and breaking the concept of national identity. Very soon you will not even be able to protest against this because to do so would be cast as hate speech. That is why legislation is being introduced now to prohibit discussion about the, the, the replacement of the native population and to imprison those who raise that issue. In the midst of a housing crisis, we propose a mass importation of people from every part of the world without any economic justification. And any person who speaks against this is described in the capped up language of our government and our journalists as a racist, a xenophobe or worse. We must proudly proclaim that seeking to protect our nation from social and cultural disintegration is not a racist value, but a patriotic one. <laughs> Our politics, our culture, are fallen prey to a set of evil ideologies. And I think the only recourse for us is to pray for the assistance of Almighty God in delivering us from the satanic agenda which has captured our government. Our politicians seem blissfully unaware of the consequences of what they are doing and simply respond to media pressure and to the orders they receive from their masters in the European Union and the globalist institutions such as the World Economic Forum. The best way we can fight this incipient tyranny is to go back to our history and to draw strength from our past. We have fought worse tyrants than these before, and we chased them out of our country, and we can do the same again! <laughs> Time, sadly, is short. We all have a dread of what may be coming in the wake of the restrictions. We must therefore immediately move to make our voices heard in the loudest possible fashion. I firmly believe that we're on the cusp of an international movement of nationalism, populism, and returning power to the people. We see that in the United States, in Holland, in Eastern Europe, and even in China. And you can imagine, what we see in China is probably a tiny fraction of what is actually happening. This country, Ireland, which has given so much to international liberty, must ride the international wave and reassert the rights of democracy and liberty against those who seek to impose global tyranny. We will never go gently into the dark night of tyranny plans for us by the multinational corporations who control governments by the European Union, which aids and abets the destruction of democracy and liberty, and by the quizzings of the Irish state who have become the enemies of the people. We must go forth from here with a firm purpose of intention that Ireland will have, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, a new dawn of liberty, a new birth of freedom, and a new flourishing of nationhood. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Michael. It's Michael Lyon, uh, uh, Michael Lee from the uh, Irish Freedom Party. Uh, so, the uh, Islam and various groups uh, uh, we're, we're all welcome here today. Uh, I know Derek Bright has said he would like to be here, but he's a family uh, a family matter on uh, some sort of function down in Cork. And uh, Malachi Steenson has said he'd like, like to get here as well. He wanted to talk. I wonder, is Malachi here? Does anyone know? Uh, just if Malik is here, anyone else? Uh, uh, or the, the, yeah. Uh, I, our next speaker will be another courageous uh, doctor who stood up to the lines and uh, spoke out, will not be silenced. And that's Dr. Vincent Carroll. Yeah. Who is it who fears honesty? Who is it who fears truthfulness? Who is it who fears open debate? Who is it who fears free speech? It is the government and the fake opposition. I don't fear free speech. I welcome free speech. But I am opposed to compel speech. Where somebody tells me what to say. Where somebody tells me what to write. Where somebody tells me what boards I may or may not display. And ultimately, somebody will try to tell me what to think. But they will not succeed. They will not do so because I am a free and so No, no, no. But make no mistake about it, our country is facing into dark days and dark times because not everybody is a free-born citizen. You have slaves in this country. 
Slaves to the EU! Slaves to the WHO! Slaves to the UN! Slaves to every globalist body you can take off and all of them to do one thing! To reduce all nations, free nations, to a common soup, a common mess, a common bullet! All of the stomach, all of the spiritual For hundreds and hundreds of years as a nation, as a people, as a society, we've stood together, bound together, worked together, fought together, and we have come out as a free and independent nation, a shining light to the rest of the world, and there are those who want to destroy that. But I pledge my loyalty to this dear nation, and I give her my love, and I shall, as a free-born citizen, fight to defend her. Let, little by little by little, our country has been dismantled. A fragile population, maybe five million people, with a vibrant and dispersed diaspora, but still in the overall scheme of things, relatively small. We're a fragile culture and a fragile nation, population-wise. And the attempt has been made to effectively dilute us dismantle us, they will not succeed. I will say this now, because there will be an attempt to prevent me saying this later on if these free speech laws are passed, hate speech laws, but I tell you this much, I'm going to ignore them, because I know what I think and I know what I'm saying. But I am aware, I am aware in the 16th century, the plantation of Lee's Offaly, then the plantation of Munster, then the plantation of Ulster, and now there is the final plantation of Ireland. Who is this? <laughs> so, we are unique in Europe for the wrong reasons as well. And the wrong reasons are that we do not have a visible, viable opposition that is represented in Parliament to any significant extent. We have fake opposition parties. We have those that have betrayed us. Those parties are in bed with government. Come out and be honest about it. You're one and the same and we reject you. As I've said, as I've said at a previous meeting, two miles from here there was a prison, and as referred to by Michael there, there was a man in that prison, not for what he did, but for what he said on a crucial side that was compelled speech. <laughs> And when these new laws come in, in my pocket this morning, I grabbed from my surgery table a copy of the proclamation where it says that the Irish nation belongs to the Irish people. Are we able to say that with three states? One minute. I also took out a copy of the Holy Bible, and I'm wondering, I am wondering, well, if, if, I'm, if a clergyman occupies a pulpit on a Sunday and says about male and female, is that, a, is that a hate speech as well? And if it's not, you will have to prove it's not. You prove your innocence. That's nonsense. If you we should prove, we should be proven. We're going to the other way around. So, friends, colleagues, patriots, I say in these dark days, we need to stand together. We need to unite. We need to fight together. We need to support each other. Introduction, but I've got to give her one anyway. She has been standing around the way in Ballast Street.
Two years ago, I'm fighting Google and the oppression. I asked Johnny Fox. I can't look at Johnny and get the same thing like Peter from those times. Keep going, folks. You're going to like the neighbors. I said, I can't do it. Great man. I have some of those here. But uh, Peter, I uh, go to the Johnny Fox now. She's written a uh, piece for the day. So I ask her just to really be silent and uh, listen clearly and reflect on what she has to say. I haven't heard it myself yet. Thank you very much. Yes, Julie. Round of applause. Hi everyone. I, I've just written down a few words because uh, I've had like a sip, so I hope you don't mind me reading it out directly. And um, just to say that it is really a dire reflection on today's society when we find ourselves here on the street having to fight a tyrannical regime who seeks to silence and control the voices on the decent women and men and children of this country. These government imposters want to steal and erode our God-given right to speak and question freely. The government of this nation has, it will appear, gone rogue and no longer genuinely work for the Irish people. They now aim to silence anyone who questions their malicious agenda. Anyone who dares call them out on how they are violating our tiny islands, our heritage, our culture, our health, and our civil liberty. Those who use our minds, power, and media for their own gain, to push a destructive globalist agenda, they are truly the hateful ones. They are the ones who are the bodies and the kids. They are the ones who bring suffer and who much to hide as they realize that the Irish people are having a great enlightening conversation, which means to me a conversation of truth is taking place on this island with the Irish public who are discovering what really lies beneath the filthy masks of the globalist government. And it's real self-serving propaganda. This is what this is really all about. They want to stop our conversation. They want to shut us up. They want to silence as their slurries and scams are exposed. Where we will not be bullied. We will not be told. I stand here today because I have a message for the government and for every politician who should carefully consider whether they wish to stain their legacy with a dirty black mark of history should they cross the Irish people with this treasonous legislation. Hear this loud and clear. The more we try to silence us, the greater our voices will rise. The more, the more you try to impede our speech, the greater our voices will swell. We will speak with our hands. We will speak with our feet. We will speak with our actions. We will speak with our pens. And they will speak with our hearts. The more we are threatened, the more powerful our voices will rise. Our voices and our words will call out loud and strong and will vibrate deeply into the colonies of the future and will settle on the shoulders of generations of our descendants for many long years to come. Try to silence us and the voice 
Jesus will roar in the tsunami of sound after the ghost of our ancestors. And wake them from their slumber to join us in our battle for speech and freedom. Nearly finished. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you are the glorious and proud nation of poets, balladeers, storytellers, musicians, and conversationists. We will not have our voices gagged or impeded. We will never accept this anti free speech legislation. And they will never succeed in controlling our conversations. But the day is coming when the sound of silence will be welcomed. And that will be the day when the hiss of treasure snakes and vile treachery no longer permeate the houses of power in this country. And what a great conversation we will have as a nation on that day. Oh, <laughs> 
see that word parasites? We don't use that word when we get to spell true that vampire for a second stage. And now we've got the life of some form and people be so broken. Come in. Come in. Do you think this? The very, very amazing thing about it is they come out and do protests after they vote before they end the fucking time. They vote for the whole time come out and then it is time to be against it. Something needs to be put in a bucket and the lid put in it and lift it. The pinch a bit of good news. Why do you want a bit of good news? I can't hear you. Here's a bit of good news for you, and I have it right here. I got a stream last night to let the people of Bally Fairmont know the good news. Now they say we have no veto, correct? We do have veto, and here's the proof. The people of Bally Fairmont spoke. And they said no to all that illegal migrants being bumped into their areas. And here's the very proof that you do have people, you do have a say who's going into your area, you do have a say who's going to be allowed in here to leave for the blood of children. And we hear about it and get better than now. Well, we know the names are known there, and the rapist of energy is put in that area. We don't know what to do. 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 And here's the proof. I'm going to finish on that note. And the proof is Vincent Jackson, independent in Dublin town. Daddy Gillian, in Hazel E. Norton. Sophie Nicole and Dottie De Rossi, they all secretly passed a motion to dump about 800 illegal migrants into the area of this beautiful land of Lord Bobby Farmer, where a lot of elderly people live and a lot of schools with young children in them. The people said no, so they took their own veto, said no, and guess what? I do actually prove here, I have the plans in my hands. Of the building that's going on there. Not only the builders, but the owners of the trio meeting yesterday said they will be now illegal, unmarried, and invited young to build the house. So I will leave that people, and I will say, do not listen to the noise in the dark. We do have you to keep your free speech, free speech, free speech. Keep fighting to keep your free speech. Do not let them take them away from you. Just a moment in the last night. We already have hate speech laws in the Constitution. Don't lie down to what they're bringing in for their own agenda. And I want to say thank you. Over to you. Good day. <laughs> I'm oh, oh, oh. speaking of the this is Wait a minute, thank God we've lost him. Oh. Oh, my name is Sean. I want to do you another one. And uh, maybe just uh, listen to a second, folks. Yeah, it's a very serious situation. We have a woman here who, um, I should tell you a situation herself. Her name is Linda Rogers, and she's been on hunger strike for the last, I don't know how many days, over 30 days. She's been on hunger strike for 38 days here in the country in a tent right over there. So I'm delighted that she's well enough to come along and speak to us here tonight. She's a, a great woman, a woman of great integrity, in my opinion. For Linda Rogers, please. Good afternoon. I'm Nona Hale and August Fuller. Good here. Thanks, Peter, for the opportunity to speak at this rally today. 
Um, the freedom of speech is very important. Helen McEntee needs to know that. Um, so, so I was on hunger. I was on hunger strike here for 38 days, and uh, I remain on hunger strike for the, for a list of seven demands. The first demand was to house all homeless, all, all Irish homeless, all Irish homeless in this country. My colleague, my comrade, my friend, um, Paul Lennon, remains on hunger strike. It's it's 49 days in Cobra Hill Prison, Roman Prison. Um, there's an extension put on there, and we, we want to know why. So, so our seven demands, anyway, the, 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 the other demands, uh, the, the six other demands were uh, peripheral to the main demand of the housing the Irish homeless. So we, we continue the struggle to 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 uh, to beg uh, for uh, even a reply by email. Uh, but, uh, but other than copy and paste, we say, and an answer to my phone calls and to other others in our team uh, at the GPO hunger strike. So I mean, on the eighth of November, the appointment was taken away under arrest. So he um, took a call to there, but uh, it was a. Uh, uh, on the usual circumstances, but he's now 16 days remaining in a cell and uh, under uh, abusive, uh, let's say, it's raging in an abusive situation there and uh, a, a breach of human rights, a breach of the, the prison service uh, charter uh, as well. So we're, we're rallying, against, rallying against that and trying to get some um, proper order out of them, really. Um, so and we're trying to, uh, trying to reassure them that we're right here for I don't know what do you want to do. I'm staying in the dog. What do you want to do? Just talk or anything. Take a white jacket and all that. Here's the one. Get somewhere. I want somebody to get a few to get out of the arrow. My ears are kidding me now. Okay, all, I'm going to end this now, okay? Thank you all for joining us today. It's been a nice day. Joni, and John, and everyone else that popped by. Let me go live later, yeah? Right, come on. Bye.